Hi, good morning. Um, so I'm Ronnie from uh, Mellanox, and I want to talk about uh, connection tracking. That's our already spoke last time, the last NetDev. And now, because we are a vendor that want to take everything to the hardware, uh, so I will speak of how we're going to take the connection tracking into the hardware. So, f this is not the last slide deck, but okay, I'm fine. Um, so, the connection tracking, first I want to, uh, to explain what is connection tracking, that all the audience will understand and not to fall asleep. So, connection tracking is kind of uh, basic thing that's using in firewall in order to understand when a connection is starting and a TCP connection, so you're looking on the CNC NAC and when the connection is closed on the fin or if it's a reset. So there is a code in the kernel called the contract that is used um, uh, for connection tracking. It's part of the, of the net filter uh, and it's doing for every packet two things. First, you identify if it's a new connection, if it's, it's already know this connection, you have a, a hash table of all the current connection. And for every connection, after he, vali he validate and not open a new entry for this connection, he's doing a TCP, for TCP, he's doing also window validation. So for every packet, uh, you need to exam uh, that is in the current TCP window. And if it is, he's updating his information in order that the windows is uh, progressing. So this is the two things that connection tracking is doing today. So I am coming uh, from, and we are doing uh, obvious offload. Uh, for it's just for example, of course, uh, we, we have some customer that's working without, uh, con without OVS that consume it uh, for uh, cloud propose proposals, but without uh, OVS, I have some proprietary, um, and, but using the same concept. So for OVS uh, connection tracking, CT, um, we also want to use the same, so okay, so I'll explain how it's, it worked today with OVS. So OVS is using uh, this, the ker kernel connection tracking, the contract from the net filter, and it's forwarded to the, um, to the module of, of the connection tracking, get the information from the connection tracking. If it's a new established or and the, the status of the connection tracking. And then you have another table that can specify, okay, if it's a new connection, those are the action. If it's already established, that's the action probably you, op you allow, usually you allow to open a connection. So it's a new connection can become from one direction and the other uh, way, it's only available if it's established. Okay, so the concept that we want to take, uh, take it to the hardware. So um, first, today, already today, we're using TC to hardware offload other OVS uh, things uh, into the hardware. So we want to use, of course, the same. Um, and also we also understand that connection tracking uh, is used by the, using the con contract in the kernel, so we also want to use that. So now we need that TC will call connection tracking, called CT. Um, but even that we t want to take everything to the hardware, we don't think and we don't uh, want to take the creation of a new connection into the hardware. So we want that every packet, the first packet, the first few, the, the scenes in arc of a connection will go to the software. The software will decide what you want to do with that. And only while the connection is established, then we want to take it to the hardware. So the, the software so should look like 
Okay, I have uh, TC tables, and one of the tab one of the action in the connection in uh, sorry, in the TC TC filter will be go to connection tracking. So in the software, we indeed will do the same. We we'll send the packet to the connection tracking. Uh, the connection tracking will identify the packet, uh, open a new connection if needed, and will return an information on this packet. And there is already today um, SKB in um, city state that you can see what is the connection is um, state after the connection tracking uh, goes over it. And then in the next table on the TC, we can do some lookup according to the connection information that we got. Okay, let's explain. So to more, so to more details, so, wait, okay. Okay, so what, what we need to add to TC is two things. First, to allow, to specify a way to go to connection tracking. And this is approximately the same as OVS is using today the kernel, but now it will be through TC. So you have a rule, uh, you, ha you can say a rule, as I mentioned before, you can specify, go to connection tracking, and give some more information, like how you want to continue when you go, do you have a zone or other information that you want to give to the connection tracking. So this will be a new action in the, connect, in the TC. And also a new match to match according to the, according to the, action, to the state that came back from the connection tracking. So when a packet is coming back from the connection tracking, um, we want to see um, what is the state for it, is it established, if it's invalid, if it's uh, related, there are many uh, options that can be, be. And here's some an example. Uh, I already also presented uh, last year of example of how a, a city command line will look like. So as you can see, there are matches in the first line and an action go to connection tracking. And how you, con how you continue, because you go into connection tracking and probably want to do a lookup on the value that is coming back. And this is the example of the second. Okay. And now we want to take it to the hardware. So, we want to take a general case, of course, of connection tracking because people we can do a first connection tracking, another connection tracking to have uh, um, and to do some uh, branch in the tables, like because it's it's software and the uh, Menox hardware is also very flexible. In order that it it also can support that. So here, for example, you can see that uh, in the upper table. We are going to connection tracking, for example, and few tables, and we continue with uh, tables, and down below there is a split, what you want to do with a new connection, and what you want to do with established connection. So this is the concept that's what the customer wanted to have. Okay, a and what we want to do is, okay, we know that the packet want the customer, we want the, the packet to go to connection tracking, so we take the packet to the connection tracking, and the connection tracking is processing. This is happening in the software, so the, we are processing if it's a scene, scene arc, uh, and continue. It's done. It's still done in the software, and. What we're doing in the hard, that's the concept as I, as I explained before. So what we are doing in order to maintain that, we have a table inside the hardware that's doing a match on the five tuple. This is the green box down there. So if the packet is a have a match in this five, for this five tuple, it means that we already process it and we understand what we need to do. 
If not, this packet is unknown for the hardware, and it's doing a miss and going to the software. When this packet is going to the software, it is going to the uh, to be forwarded by the connection by the TC, sorry, that will send the packet to the connection tracking, as I explained before. And what then is happening? That's when the packet inside the connection connection tracking is going to establish. Then is the time that we said, okay, we understand now that this connection is already open, and we want all the packet that is following it from the same connection will be handled by the hardware. So what we are doing is adding a rule to the connect to the this green table with the specific five tuple. So all the packet that is following by this uh, connection, following packets of this connection, next time then that will arrive to the to the hardware. As you mentioned, as I mentioned before, are going to the connection, are going to the table, and we uh, be doing a match on the green table. And whoops, we do have this five tuple. Okay, so we do have this five tuple, and we know this is established in established state. So we know that we can continue. So we mark the packet as established, and let the packet continue to go on the other table. And then we, actually, we see another match. It's this is what I'm talking that's happening inside the hardware. A match on the connection state. Bef because we know this connection, we already find it in the green box. The on, we match on the five tuple. We know what is the state of this connection. We have some metadata on the packet so that tell us what is the state of this connection. So we can continue and parsing according to this metadata. So if, if it's established, we can continue and do the other rules according to the, how it was configured um, by, uh, by the TC. I hope that it was understood. I have a quiz later. So be ready. Um, of course, uh, so connection tracking uh, is using today by Nate Filter, so we don't doing it uh, everything by ourselves because we need you know to put our fingers inside. So uh, we are of course uh, uh, working with uh, Pablo, that's also doing uh, the same thing for uh, offloading uh, connection tracking. So we are working with him to find the right way to do that. So there was um, a few guys from Mellanox that uh, participate in the net filter that was a month ago in Berlin and worked with him about, uh, on it, as he also mentioned. And we want to find the, quick, the, the best way that uh, we, can con we can use this code of that Pablo is uh, already did an RFC, it, and I think it's, it took back a little bit bef because there, not wa there wasn't a hardware that can support it. So of course, we want to support it. Um, what we, so we hope that uh, we will have a, a, a POC something uh, this month, and uh, to have a, a valid uh, solution, let's hope by end of the year. I know that uh, it sounds that I'm promising. I, I hope that, that uh, we will uh, do it. Um, let me cover it. So, what we want to, so we, as I mentioned, we want to start with TCP because. Uh, this is our more attraction uh, that uh, need to be done, but we also have customer that's asking for uh, UDP, of course, and even for ICMP, a hardware offer for that. Uh, so UDP is less challenging because uh, um, this, the, there are no scenes in ACK, but there are other things that's also a problem. You don't have FIN for UDP, so you need to figure out when to age. Uh, this connection. Uh, in order to do that, 
we need counters. Uh, glad that we do have counters already today uh, with TC, but that will be per connection that we need to have counters in order to maintain the aging. And another thing that's currently we want to start with a very simple connection tracking that's, as I mentioned in the first slide, a connection tracking in the kernel doing two things. He's going on the connection and identify uh, the state of the connection, is doing tracking on the connections. And while the connection is valid, he is validating that's all the packet. Uh, for every packet that is going through this connection, he is validating the TCP window. So this is something that uh, our current uh, hardware is not supporting. And uh, we want to add it so that it will be by, uh, to, done by the hardware. But that's will code that we also will add, of course, uh, after we will finish the first version uh, that is doing it without the connection tracking, because it's also need to maintain and forward this information of the, how you create this connection and send this information to the hardware that you can continue and understand the TCP window and doing the, pars the parsing for that and validate that all these packets are uh, validate according to the current TCP windows that is progressing. Thank you. Questions? So what sort of connection tracking do you um, have in mind for UDP? UDP is connectionless. What connection tracking can you do? I mean, at most, you can track ICMP errors or something. What do you have in mind for UDP connection tracking? So for UDP connection tracking, I want to do the same, to go to the connection tracking module inside the kernel. But UDP is connectionless. So what are you tracking? So that's what is done today. Also, you, uh, connection tracking already today the contract in the kernel in the net filter all already today uh, can maintain uh, UDP. So I want to obey to the same thing. So the concept will be the same. First packet, if it's unknown, it's going to the software. There is a software path that's really go to the connection tracking. I don't want to invent anything new. Uh, and also UDP could be fragmented. So your first packet may not necessarily be the first packet. It may be the second packet out of the first fragment, out of the, some other fragment. Yes, yeah, so the ruling, okay, so the, the way to enforce um, connection tracking, actually when you have a firewall, is that you allow a connection to be open from single direction. It means that a typical example will be, okay, uh, if it's established, it's okay to go from each of the side. But if it's a new connection, it's only al allowed, like if you fi uh, th think about your uh, home uh, firewall, you only allow a new connection to be opened from inside the house, from your home. You don't allow that any connection that is coming from in, it's probably be an evil that is trying to open a connection from the outside inside to your, to your home. So this concept is for, usually done for TCP, but also can be a, a bay for UDP. So this is also done for today for UDP. If it's a new connection and the rules say it's only allowed to be, to be opened from this direction and according to this specific uh, consideration, so that's what we'll, we'll enforce. Yes, yes, that's to extend the information that you're providing. Um, the connection tracking system already comes with um, uh, the fragmentation support. It, it, it is required right, right up front before the packet is passed to the contract. So um, that is already solved. And, and the other thing is about the UDP is connection less, right? But we're doing poor, poor man uh, tracking in that sense. Uh, we consider that the packets that we are seeing after 180 seconds with no packet since that we, we consider that the, the flow has expired. So it's. Uh, for the connection tracking offloading, so my question is, uh, could you talk a, a little bit about the hardware you are using for the offloading and uh, 
Is this connection tracking only supported by Mellanox hardware? So I don't think that this connection tracking can be supported only by Mellanox. I think for, to do that, to implement this concept, you just need to have a match uh, on a five tuple and to have a metadata. So I, I think that other vendor also can uh, implement it. Thank you. Because there is still in this uh, solution, there is no TCP window validation and tricky thing that you need to implement in the hardware, but just have a met match on a five tuple and the metadata. So I think most of the hardware, the modern hardware that's supporting that. I, I didn't validate. And uh, of course, all the other uh, vendors that want to participate are more than welcome to, to join the effort to see that it's meet the, the needs. And so if, if we need you know, to do some modification to support other vendors, of course, we are, op we are open source and we want everybody to work. This is better for the ecosystem. Thank you. Hi. Uh, Move close to the mic. So, uh, if I understand correctly, so you are saying that basically the connect, uh, the flow is offloaded after the connection is established. So, the SYN, SYNAC, and ACK packets go to the software. After the uh, three-way handshake, then you are offloading the flow to the hardware. Right? Right. Okay, so but the later packets, you are not validating the later packets of the flow in the hardware, right? So, so, so what do you mean not validating? We, we are just verifying that there is a match on this five tuple. Okay, but. And the, fla and the flags, of course, is only acts. It's no reset, no, f it's a, if it's a reset or fin, it's also going to the software. And of course, it's a, another scene, it's also need to go to the software. So just validating that the packet contain only um, ACK flags, and then we are forwarding it. If it's not, we let the software handle it. Okay. So basically, t you know, for the true connection tracking, we need to also support the window, uh, uh, window ma whether the packet is within the TCP window <coughs> that is missing. And is there anything else missing that the connection tracking does in software? Or is the, just the window management is the only part that needs to be done to support the full connection tracking in hardware? So yes, the TCP window is the, the, the only thing that is missing okay. in order to have an exact TCP uh, match for what is done today mm -hmm. in the kernel. But I, as also Pablo did, is also doing an offload for connection tracking. It's a software offload. So it's currently it's not even, uh, uh, going to the hardware, but also there he is bypassing all the window validation part. Uh, and I think also in the software he saw, he, he saw that it's a gain, I think two time or something like that, uh, Pablo? So around yeah, two and a half? Yeah, so, so basically, so yeah, basically uh, what we have now is um, um, we, because the, co the connection tracking system is quite complex and supports lots of features. It, it, it was not a good fit to, um, to map it exactly to what hardware can do. So what we, what we have introduced is a new infrastructure that we call it a flow table net filter infrastructure that basically um, it, it is hooking a, a, a hash table at the ingress hook and in software and then for each packet that kicks in we look up for, uh, for an entry in that table, and if there is a matching, then we just know what to do with the packet, so we just place it in the destination NIC via the neighbor uh, layer. So what it happens is that the idea is that, and the patches that I, I posted and that Ronnie is talking about, is basically just, um, we are going to, um, from a, a work queue, from a kernel thread, we are going to spin over the, the, the entries in, this, in the software flow table that can be offload, that can be, that we can configure in, hot, in hardware. And then once the configuration is done, the house is not going to see any packet. So that's basically the idea. So it's, it's a very, very simple representation just to, to uh, map the basic feature set that, that hardware 
the hardware that, that I had access can do, and then we can move on and keep extending it to, to, to incrementally support more features uh, as hardware uh, shows more capabilities. And if we could do that in a way that um, that is transparent to the user, the user in the sense that um, depending on the hardware what, or what the hardware can do, from the control plane, the user could configure things that want, want to be done. And if the hardware doesn't support it, we could say, I don't support this. So the user is, is aware of what, real, what, what the hardware can do, actually. So that's basically the, the idea behind the flow table infrastructure. So it's, it's kind of a simplification of the connection tracking. But it's, it's bas basically using it. It, it requires it to, um, to, to work. Yeah, so, so I don't know if I understood Pablo's idea, but you're suggesting that you will discover what the hardware can do and reduce the feature set. For, we, we, clearly, in his case, window tracking is missing. Yes. But you, well, I, I'm not aware of a, hard, a hardware. Probably, yeah, you know, if it's a, it, it may not be necessary. Yeah. CPUs, you can implement it, but I'm not aware of a hardware that is doing it today. Yeah, it could be. So in some cases, you won't need it. Maybe in that case, you go you send things to software if someone really wants the TCP window. Yes. But, but your yes. suggestion is what? That you'll query the hardware to see what it's capable of tracking and then decide which feature set to download, yes? Right, right. Yes. So this is going Sounds to be reasonable exposed to, me. to the user. And um, I mean, it's not only window tracking, but there are way more features that we do in software, check some yeah. validation, for example. Uh, I mean, a number of things that are I've already supported that, and, and, and that we currently cannot easily map because of the hardware that we have checked. So as hardware start supporting more features, we can extend that model. OK. So I, I had a slightly different question, almost like what Somino was asking. Why is UDP spatial or ICMP? Isn't that like five tuples should be sufficient to, to describe what UDP is? So yes, it is. So okay. I think the yeah. difference between yeah. uh, yeah. Okay, so the, the, the question was, if you, you can't describe a five tuple, you can probably only have four in that case, yeah? No, you're, yeah. Uh, yeah. if you're not the first fragment in the right. UDP packet, you don't have anything. Right. You just have an IPID. When you have fragmentation. Yes, yeah, so I think, so for TCP, it's easy. Because yes. you're using don't fragment, so you don't supposed to see any fragment. And also in the real world, we're talking about people that ask for performance. Usually, even that is UDP, you don't do fragments. Fragments mean less performance, and we, we, we don't want to, to complicate the hardware to do a, a IP defragmentation, because you need to store the buffer. It's very complicated, and we don't believe that it's worth it. I don't see many customers that uh, want to work in this environment, of course, we will have a solution. Software will handle it. OK. So the other question is, I couldn't quite tell what your criteria for deciding which flow gets offset. It sounds like you, you, you'll offload everything. No. So the criteria is TC. TC decide which packet, according to TC rules, you decide when you want to go to connection tracking. So you have, the criteria can be any match on on TC, that is we are supporting okay, today. So, so TC will decide based on a yeah. static policy, yeah. right? Not if that the hardware has only 1024 entries, and so there's a million flaws. So if you look on this slide, you see there is a, th those what we are already supporting today with TC. So okay. we're doing TC uh, offload so for tables. And no, now that, you that, have a new action. That, that's that's fine, but. There has to be a criteria. If, if a flow has only two packets, would you offload that? Or if the flow... Ah, okay, you're talking about that. Okay. Yes. So or you only have 10 entries. Are you going to offload 100,000 flows into the hardware? You, you, your hardware can only support 1024, let's say. It's not. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I figured you'd say that. But there's some other hardware that doesn't have... That. Right. So first, if it's a new connection, all the scenes in ARC is done in the software. We already asked also Pablo to, to add a new kind of a new feature that's for short-lived connection. 
uh, you don't want to take it to the hardware because if it's a very, very uh, small, and I said small, you know, it's even can be a small GIF that you take with uh, TCP for your web browser, it's just a few packets. The overhead of the scene scene arc is already done. The fin is also can be processed in the, uh, need to be processed. Right. So if it's few packets, all the overhead to take it to the hardware, we're not sure it will benefit. So, okay, so only elephant So flows. we want to, to only to, uh, to offload the connections that we see that's past three, four pack. Who sets that criteria? So this criteria is done by the software. Uh, as you remember, so the, the one that is adding to the, to the green table is the software. So the software can decide if it's after the, the, the scene scene arc is immediately going and put it in the software, uh, in, the, in the hardware, or is delaying it to see that he's getting a uh, few more packets and like decide like, like, no, if you see five packets or 10 packets. We don't want to go to a larger number because what is happening that is the TCP window is starting to open. So the, la so the delay will be uh, very short between packets and then you will have a reorder issue because you have a software path and, once in a, and while you move it to the hardware, there is a split inside the silicon and the slow path could be slower and you will have a reorder in the TCP. So we don't want to do, you know, to, to let customer use it. Okay, after you forward the uh, 1K packets, then go take it to the hardware because then you will see a reorder. Uh, okay. But a few packets, uh, this is a typical very, very short-lived uh, short connections, small mice, as they call, and that's what you, want, you, you don't want to take to the hardware. Okay, so there's a feature that's going to be added to contract that you're going to use, or is... Yes. Okay. So also, actually, the connection tracking is a security feature, right? Unless we do window tracking, I don't think, see a value in just offloading into hardware after a three after a few packets it's a it's a fast path so you have to you have to look at this as just a just as a way to 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 get more performance it's, it's just a fast path so it, it, you have to trade off between your requirements if you really want to do full validation then you have to follow the software path obviously because the software path is more flexible and you could do everything from there but in case you you, you need to 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 improve performance then you can do a trade off you can get 90 percent of the packets going through the silicon with just performing the initial validation from the software. So then you get the trade-off. Um, so the, the, good, the good thing about this, I mean, in my opinion, is that you, you get all the flexibility that you have in, in software for the, the initial classification of those packets because the policy is going to apply to only very little packets that, that, that are coming initially in that flow. So, and then, and then once, once after, once you match your criteria, you decide to, to put push that flow into it, into the hardware and you can do that um, wherever you want so i mean it's not it's not necessarily that you have to do it once the connection is established but you could you could even postpone that and then you, you and then you basically play tuning with that trade off and you decide what you need so remember that you, you're talking about the last leg that is not done today in the hardware, but according to the software implementation, it will be done and can be done. So it's just a way, on the way, now we're starting with not doing the window validation because there is no hardware that is supporting that, but we will have it in the future. But also today, when we talk about validation, we will validate that the checksum are okay, the TCP, the IP checksum okay, the TCP checksum okay, because that's every hardware is already to do, doing today. We validate that we are we are familiar with this five tuple. We are validating the TCP flags that is not a, a scene or a new scene or fin or reset. So we validate it that is only uh, ax packets. So that's a validation that can easily be done today. So we're doing a lot of validation. What is, not, what is missing right now, it's to do a window validation. And we, we see many customers that's already today implementing it, um, kind of uh, connection tracking and bypass the window validation because of the performance. 
it's a performance seat. Uh, and as Pablo did the testing it on, on a server, you can double the performance if you just remove the window validation. So it, it's, it's a, a question what the customer is willing to, to, to pay in order to get performance for the current version. And of course, as always in hardware, you know, it's taken more time a little bit to add uh, things. So we will have it in the next hour. How do? Okay, we, we, we're going to pull. Pablo, you have another comment you want to make? Or? Yeah, we, we'll pull uh, Ronnie to the penalty box. <laughs> hey, you go and harass him on the corner while we prepare for the next talk. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you.